Hello, and welcome to Book 2, Chapter 20 of You Should Be Reading. Today I would like to talk to you about some horror, because we're starting into October. And that particular horror is, of course, from one of the masters of horror, Stephen King, and his book, Desperation. Now, Desperation is a very strange and unusual book. It's, it's a Stephen King. A lot of his books are. This is actually, because this is one of the ones that is all done up, re-released, it's got the little symbol on it, so it's connected to the Dark Tower series. Anyone with that little symbol on it, just in case you're wondering, is connected. Somehow, maybe tangentially, maybe a little more intuitively, but regardless, desperation is all about this little town in the middle of the desert called Desperation. And there's a mine in it. And something was something was dug up. Something awoke. And things are kind of messed up. There's, there's an evil god entity causing all sorts of trouble. Uh, but it, it starts off fairly simple. You start off with a uh, family driving along the desert, and they end up running afoul of a police officer. Now, this particular police officer is a rather, rather large fellow, and he basically causes trouble, rounds up the family, and throws them in the county jail. And that's when things start getting weird, because this particular police officer happens to be possessed by this evil god entity, what have you, it goes from there. Uh, there's a ton of it. Look at the size of this book. This is a Stephen King book. This will be wordy. Anyone who's read Stephen King knows. You're, you're in for a treat. And it, he takes the strangest things, simplest little things, and just can spin them all out of proportion and really, really make you wonder about the nature of reality. And this is, this is a technically two-parter book. Te I say technically. There's there's this book. There's another book called The Regulators, written by Stephen King as Richard Bachman, which literally takes the same characters, sort of, as is in this book, and ends up sticking them all on the same street in this suburban area. They're all neighbors with each, with each other, but there's some, there's some strangeness going on there in, in that other book because the children and the family that you see here are the parents in this other book. And the parents in this book are the children in the other book. He really spices it up and makes some interesting things. But it, it kind of goes from there because there's giant monsters running around, big wolves, uh, spiders, all kinds of interesting things. It's really hard to get into the meat of it without without spoiling a lot of it. And I don't want to do that because this is one of his better books, in my opinion. It's not one of his more widely known ones, but it's one of his better ones. They also did a DVD, um, like a miniseries, based off this book, in which Ron Perlman stars as the tall, drink-of-water police officer. So if you're interested in any of that, check maybe the DVD out. Definitely check the book out, though. So, I'm going to keep it kind of short. It's horror. It's good. There's all kinds of strange, usual Stephen King stuff happening in it. So if you like Stephen King at all, uh, even if you don't, uh, check this one out. Instead of me saying, go check out It, or go check out The Stand, or... Was it the um, the Dead Zone or, or any of his more famous works? No, no. Check out Desperation. You'll be glad you did. So I'm going to leave you with this. Part 1, Highway 50, in the House of the Wolf, the House of the Scorpion. Oh, oh Jesus, gross. What, Mary, what? Didn't you see it? See what? She looked at him in the harsh desert sunlight. 
she saw that a lot of the colour had gone out of her face, leaving just the marks of sunburn on her cheeks and across her brow, where not even a strong sunblock cream would entirely protect her. She was very fair and burned easily. On that sign, the speed limit sign, what about it? There was a dead cat on it, Peter, nailed there or glued there or some damn thing. He hit the brake pedal. She grabbed his shoulder at once. Don't you even think about going back. But, but what? Did you want to take a picture of it? No way, Jose. If I have to look at that again, I'll throw up. Was it a white cat? He could see the back of the speed limit sign, the back of the sign in the rearview mirror. The speed limit sign she was talking about, presumably, but that was all. And when they passed it, he'd been looking off in the other direction, at some birds flying towards the nearest wedge of mountains. Strictly attending to the highway was not something one had to do every second out here. Nevada had its stretch of US-50, called its stretch of US-50, the loneliest highway in America. And in Peter Jackson's opinion, it lived up to his billing. Of course, he was a New York boy, and he supposed he might be suffering a cumulative case of the creeps. Desert agoraphobia, ballroom syndrome, something like that. No, it was a tiger stripe, she said. What difference does it make? I thought maybe Satanists in the desert. This place is supposed to be filled with weirdos. Isn't that what Mary L said? Intense was the word she used, Mary said. Central Nevada's full of intense people. Quote, unquote. Gary said pretty much the same. But since we haven't seen anybody since we crossed the California state line, well, in Fallon, pit stops don't count, she said. Although... Even there, the people... She gave him a funny, helpless look that he didn't see often in her face these days, although it had been common enough in the months following her miscarriage. Why were they here, Pete? I mean, I can understand Vegas and Reno, even Winnemucca and Wendover. The people who had come from Utah to gamble there call Wendover Bendover, Peter said, grinning. Gary told me that. She ignored him. But the rest of the state, the people who are here, why do they come, and why do they stay? I know I was born and raised in New York, so I probably I can't understand it, but... You're sure it wasn't a white cat, or a black one? He glanced back into the rearview mirror, but, just, but at just under 70 miles an hour, the speed limit sign had already faded into a mottled background of sand, mesquite, and dull brown foothills. There was finally another vehicle behind them, though. He could see a hot sun star reflection pricking off its windshield. Maybe a mile back. Maybe two. No, Tiger Stripe, I told you. Answer my question. Who are the Central Nevada taxpayers, and what's in it for them? He shrugged. There aren't many taxpayers out here. Fallon's the biggest town on Highway 50, and that's mostly farming. It says in the guidebook that they dammed their lake and made irrigation possible. Cantaloupes is what they grow, mostly. And I think there's a military base nearby. Fallon was a Pony Express stop. Did you know that? I'd leave, she said. Just pick up my cantaloupes and go. He touched her left breast briefly with his right hand. That's a nice set of cantaloupes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I think I will leave that there. On that amusing note. That is one of the... Um, one of the amazing things about Stephen King and his writing, he's really, I find he, at least, he's really good at writing believable characters. The, these are people who can and do exist in the world. They're, they can be completely and utterly normal. So normal that all the strange, scary things that happen are so out of place that, that it causes a nice juxtaposition. And I do like that. But... I'm going to leave it there because after that bit, I don't think I can continue. <laughs> oh, Mr. King. I salute you, sir. So, yes, this week, uh, loyal viewers, you should be reading Stephen King, Desperation. And I'll see you next week.